Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how do we find a point that is equidistant from three other points. This is also known as how do we find the circumcenter without graphing, without doing a construction. So here we go. We have three points we're going to call point A, point B, and point C. So we have point A at negative 4, negative 2, point B at 0, 3, and point C at 5, negative 1. So if you want to go ahead and graph these, you can just to have a visual. We're not going to do that in this video. I have another video right here I'll post in the cards that shows you how to do this by graphing. Okay, so one thing we need to understand is that our circumcenter or our point that is equidistant from three other points or the three vertices of a triangle is formed by the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so what that tells us, bisect means we're gonna be working with the midpoint and perpendicular means we're going to take the opposite reciprocal of the slope, right, perpendicular line. So let's go ahead and do this. Now we have options when we start. We just need to pick two points and we need to find their midpoint. That's our first step. So let's just do A and B, point A and point B. So we're gonna find the midpoint of A and B. So to do that, we just add the X coordinates together. So let's do negative four plus zero and we divide by two and we add the Y coordinates together and we divide by two. So our midpoint, now we have negative four over two and one over two. Okay, so our midpoint here is going to be negative two comma one half. Okay, so I'm gonna put a star by that and maybe just draw an arrow telling me that's my midpoint. So now, that's my bisector. I know that my perpendicular bisector is going to go through the point negative two one half because that's the midpoint of the side. Now I need to find the slope of line segment AB. So the slope of AB. Once I find that slope, take the opposite reciprocal because that is the line that's perpendicular. So we're gonna say, let's do three minus negative two, so y2 minus y1 over zero minus negative four. So this would be three plus two, which is five, zero plus four, which is four. So that's our slope of the side. So our opposite reciprocal slope or the perpendicular to AB would be opposite, so negative and reciprocal, negative four over five. And we'll put a star by that. Now what we're gonna do is use the slope we just found, negative four fifths, and the point that our line goes through, negative two, one half, and we're gonna write an equation in slope intercept form. So we're gonna say, we'll scroll down just a little bit, let's do y equals negative four fifths x plus b, and we're gonna plug in our point negative two for x and one half for y. Okay, so once we do this, this will allow us to solve for b, and that'll give us the equation of, our, of one of our perpendicular bisectors. So we have one half equals, and this is gonna be eight over five plus b, and now we're going to subtract eight over five from both sides. Okay, so here we have one half minus eight fifths, so if we want to give a common denominator, we can. So let's call this five over 10 minus 16 over 10 is equal to b. And this is gonna tell me that b is equal to negative 11 over 10. So now I can take this b and plug it in right there for that equation. So I have now equation number one, and let's, let's write it right here. And I'll put a box around it. y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 11 over 10. Okay, so now that is all of our step one. We found one equation for one of our perpendicular bisectors. Now the circumcenter is located at the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. So we need to do that process again to find another equation so that then we can set up a system to solve for x and y. So now let's do b and c. So we'll switch up our color here and let's do b and c. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing we just did. So midpoint of bc. And let's do zero plus five over two and three plus negative one over two, okay? So zero plus five, add our x's together, three plus negative one, good. So we get five over two and three minus one, we get two over two. So this is gonna give us five over two comma one for our midpoint, okay? Now let's put a star by this and we draw our arrow just to let us know, hey, that's the midpoint of line segment BC. I could change five over two to 2.5 if I want to, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. So now let's find the slope of BC. So let's do negative one minus three over five minus zero. 
So negative 4 over 5. So now our perpendicular slope of BC would be equal to 5 over 4. Now we're going to take our equation, y equals 5 over 4x plus b, and we're going to plug in our x and our y. So y is 1, and x was 5 over 2. And now we're going to get 1 is equal to 25 over 8 plus b. And we could rewrite this, so let's subtract 25 over 8. And now we can say 25 over 25 minus, or excuse me, let's do 8 over 8, right? 8 over 8 minus 25 over 8 equals b. So this is going to tell us that b is equal to negative 17 over 8. And now we can plug that in for b, right? Plug it in right there. And now we have our other equation, y equals 5 over 4x minus 17 over 8. Okay, we have two equations. Now what we can do is go ahead and multiply, or set, let's go ahead and set these two equal to each other. Let's say we don't have a calculator, we can't graph them and find the intersection, anything like that. So now we're gonna take those two equations and we're gonna solve a system. So since they're both equal to y, let's do substitution. So let's say negative four over five x minus 11 over 10 is equal to five over four x minus 17 over eight. Now, when we're solving an equation where we have fractions, it is oftentimes beneficial if we can get rid of our denominators. So let's take and let's multiply both sides here by the least common denominator of 5, 10, 4, and 8. So let's say, how about 40? I think that would work. Okay. So now, when we're multiplying here, let's do, this is going to be negative 32x minus 44. And this will be 10, so 50x minus and 17 times 5 is going to give me 5, 3, and 8. So minus 85. Okay. Now we can go ahead and combine our x's. So let's add 32x to both sides. So we get negative 44 equals 82x minus 85. Let's add 85 to both sides. And this is going to give me 41 is equal to 82x, right? Now we divide both sides by 82, and 41 is half of 82, so we get x is equal to 0 0.5. So there's our x coordinate of our point, okay? A lot of work. Now from here, we can take x and we can plug it back into, we'll take it back all the way up here, into either one of those original equations to solve for y. So let's do the equation we had here in um, white. So negative 4 fifths x minus 11 over 10. So y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 11 over 10. And let's plug in 1 half for x. So y equals negative 4 fifths times 1 half minus 11 over 10. So we get y equals negative 4 over 10 minus 11 over 10. And y equals negative 4 minus 11. That would be negative 15 over 10. And we can simplify that to get negative 1.5, okay? So now our point, we can go back all the way up here at the top, our point that is equidistant from three points is down here at the bottom, and we're gonna say it is 0 0.5 comma negative 1.5, okay? And so that is how you find the, a point that is equidistant from three other points, which is also known as the circumcenter. So let me see if I can zoom out for you to show you maybe this whole process. All right, so I know it's kind of small, but that is all of our work right there.